हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टूडेज क्लास इज फॉर बी बी ए थर्ड ईयर फाइनेंस स्टूडेंट्स एंड वी विल डिस्कस द सब्जेक्ट एस आई पी एम दैट इज सिक्योरिटी एनालिसिस एंड पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजमेंट सो प्लीज स्टूडेंट्स इफ यू रिमेम्बर वाट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव जस्ट स्टार्टेड द यूनिट टू दैट इज द रिस्क what we have already been started you are a unit 2 which consists of risk and return i have already told you that this unit that is your unit 2 consists of both theory papers as well as from problem papers are there or some problems are there so in the last video we have discussed the meaning of risk what what do you mean by risk risk is the possibility of making the loss due to the uncertainty in the future i was remember students future is always uncertain no one can predict what is going to happen in the future no one can predict what is going to happen in the coming futures so future is totally uncertain in nature so risk is nothing but it is the probability or chance of making the loss due to the uncertainty in the future and we have also seen that there always occurs a direct relationship between the risk of the securities and its return higher is the risk higher will be the return lower will be the risk lower will be the return so if you want to make more return return means the incomes return is nothing but the incomes from the investment so if you being a smart investor if you want to make more income from your limited investment then you have to take the risk and invest accordingly on the other hand if you don't want to take any kind of risk then you should go for fixed securities so that they are the risk may be zero and accordingly the return will also be zero not zero it means very limited income will be there so higher is the risk higher will be the return lower is the risk lower will be the return so there always exist a direct relationship between the risk and its return now in today's video we will see the various types of risk types of risk dear students for better understanding what you may say about the concept of risk we need to understand the various types of risk or in other words only when being a rational investor only when we are able to analyze or make a proper distinction or have a thorough study on the various types of risk then only we can be able to make our investment in a more better manner so the total risk that is there with the investor or that lies with the investment are broadly be classified into two two different categories what are those systematic risk and unsystematic risk so the basic concept of risk is broadly be classified into two different segments number one systematic risk number two unsystematic risk now we will study in a uh, detailed manner both the concepts dear students the systematic risk you may also say why it is systematic because it is 
bound to happen or you may say systematic risk are those risks which are external to the business suppose our business is there so these factors are external to the business these factors are always external to the business since these factors are external to the business hence the business or the investor cannot do anything regarding this systematic risk in other words the investor or the business maybe the investor or maybe the business is bound to face those kind of risk bound to face those kind of risk hence these risks are external or we can also say very important word these risks are totally uncontrollable in nature so systematic risk is also known as uncontrollable risk so those risks which cannot be controlled by the business unit will be known as the uncontrollable risk because these are completely external to the organization the organization has to face those kind of a risk has to face those kind of a risk and these kind of a risk are bound to happen the investor or the businessman has to suffer from this risk that's why the name suggests us systematic now we will see the various components or various factors of systematic risk Market risk, dear students. Over the period of time, we have already seen that the market cannot remain constant. The market cannot remain constant. On the contrary. it is also true that the market never support any particular business never support any particular business just remember your marketing management subject that you have already studied in your bba second year course or in your bba second year syllabus what subject was there marketing management in the marketing management you might have been studied very very important topic product life cycle plc product life cycle so under product life cycle every business is have to pass through four different stages four different stages number 1 introduction where the business start its operation number 2 we can say the growth stage or stage 2 that is the growth stage where the business goes on improving goes on expanding its activities continue to make profit enjoys uh, competitiveness over its competitors so this is all about second stage that is growth third stage maturity which is very important or even a saturation point also maturity maturity or saturation point means this is the point where the business has already reached the peak point or the top point 
after that the business will definitely fall down will definitely fall down so this is the maturity stage and next or that is the last stage is decline stage decline stage that is the business is slowly and slowly bound to shut down now one of the general reason for the product life cycle is in one sentence you may say market never supports anyone market never supports anyone so since keeping this point or keeping this concept in mind now we will see the market is market never supports anybody or market always fluctuate there may be different different stages in the market like there may be the inflation where the price of goods and commodities continuously goes on rising there may be the deflation stage where the price of the goods or commodity continuously falls down there may be boom there may be the peak stage so, so all these things were there in your market so market always fluctuates in nature since the market is completely fluctuable in the nature hence you, we, we can uh, say that the business is bound to face such kind of a risk hence it is also its market risk is also known as your inflation risk inflation risk both are having the same meaning market risk or inflation risk inflation is the period as i already told you right now that where inflation is the period where the price of goods or commodities goes on increasing so during such period the consumers definitely hesitate to buy any kind of goods any kind of commodities because the prices is already very high so due to this the consumers hesitate to buy the goods hence the sales of the particular business will definitely going to fall uh, with a very large or huge extent so such kind of risk is always there or always exist in the industry due to inflation due to deflation take uh, you may say due to other reasons also where the market fluctuates due to the economic policies of the government due to economic policies of the government the market may fluctuate so whatever may be the reason if the market fluctuate then the business is bound to have uh, face the market risk and students as you all know market is completely external to our business hence our business has to face the risk cannot do anything regarding this market or inflation rate risk so this kind of risk will continue definitely fall under your systematic risk one should you you should remember that uh, systematic and uncontrollable uh, it, it little bit confusing in nature because as the word systematic is there so it should be controllable but actually it is not rather it is what uncontrollable you can see on the board also uncontrollable systematic risk also known as uncontrollable risk uncontrollable risk means those risk which cannot be controlled by the business unit so this is all about point number one market risk i hope you, you students will be definitely able to understand next second factor of your uh, systematic risk is interest rate risk dear students interest rate always fluctuate or always differs from country to country due to the economic policies of the government the interest rate uh, will always differ from country to country so the interest rate always plays a vital role so far as systematic risks are concerned let's take one example for better understanding we are discussing the interest rate risk keep the point in mind
if this point is mine, interest rate risk. Suppose one particular country is there, named country X. And in country X, whatever be the country, we call it as head country X for your better understanding. One of the company doing the business in that particular country, say, one of the business unit who is doing the business in that particular country, say, business A. Business A or company A. Now, another country is there. Say, country Y. Country Y is the another country. Another business unit who is doing the business in country Y, say, company B. Company B is the second company. Take the example very very carefully. Country X in which company A is there. Country Y in which company B is there. Now, suppose I am the investor. I am a rational investor. So, before making my investment in 2 TWO, the two countries that I have already written on the board, country X and country Y, I will definitely check the two countries interest rate What I will check? I will check the two different countries interest rate. Suppose in country A, the interest rate exists at 8 percentage at 8 percentage and in in company Y it is 8.76 percentage 8.76 percentage fine so what I will derive from these calculations that if I will invest in country Y Definitely, this will be a wise option for me because I am getting 8.76 percentage, whereas in country X only 8 percent in is the interest. So here I am getting 0.76 percent, 0.76 percent additional income because here it is 8.76, there it is 8. So 8.76 minus 8.00 to 0 0.76 percentage or you may say 0 0.76 percentage is the additional income that I will definitely derive by investing in the company B and in country Y. So and you should also remember don't underestimate that only 0 0.76 is the additional amount that I am getting. Suppose I have rupees 50 lakhs for investment. So for 1 lakh, here it is 8,000, here it is 8 lakh 76,000. So 76,000 is the additional amount. So for 1 lakh, so in 50 lakhs, 76 lakhs into 50, approximately 35 lakhs per annum, per annum, per annum. So 35 lakhs, I will definitely additionally derive if I choose company B or country Y. What you will for? Now, take the example in a close manner. I am not saying that. My objective is never been to tell you that country X is a bad country where 8% interest fluctuate is exist. Country Y is a better country where interest rate at 8.76 exists. So country Y is better than country X. No way I am my objective was to tell you that. Rather, what I am trying to say you that this interest rate that is 8% or 8.76% is completely external to the business. Due to the economic policies, due to the government policies, the interest rate 
it is there so what the companies can do if in the country interest rate interest rate is in a fixed manner so what does the companies do take the example of country x so here what does the company a will do because the 8 percent interest is there and in company B, what does the company B will do? Because in country by 8.76% interest is there. So my objective is saying, objective of saying is that this kind of risk is bound to happen. This kind of risk is bound to happen. Interest rate is such a thing which is cannot be controlled by the business unit. The business unit has to face those kind of risks, they simply has to face. Hence, this is also known as external to the organization. Then the third category. Purchasing power risk. Dear students, it is quite clear from the term that purchasing power risk. So, purchasing power risk refers to those risks which is associated with the purchasing power of the consumer or income level of the consumer. So, if for any reason, if the purchasing power of the consumers decline due to any specific reason you may say so hence this kind of risk is also the uncontrollable factors or you may say the external factors the external factors the company cannot do anything regarding the purchasing power of the consumers take today's scenario that could be the best example dear students due to lockdown we are suffering, all of us, including you or your parents, including me, including other persons living in the society, are facing a lot of problem. Yes or no? Yes or no? The answer is definitely yes. So, all the persons or a huge portion of the population was definitely affected due to the COVID-19 effect or due to lockdown, shutdown or COVID-19 effect in short you may say. So now, at present moment, all the income level of the consumers definitely less. Somewhere it is zero. Somewhere it is zero. Income level income is completely zero. Somewhere it is less than their expected income or the less than their actual income. So all of us are definitely suffered due to the process of a COVID-19 effect in the society. My point is, what can we do? What can we do being a common man? We can do nothing regarding this COVID-19 effect, rather we have to face. So as a result of that, all the income level of the consumer has declined or is quite lesser right now. So they are not even thinking for purchasing of newer products or investment in securities because they are not able to earn properly for running their family in a smooth manner or they are completely unable to earn their livelihood so only when they have the savings then can they can think for investment since they are unable to earn the livelihood whatever the investment they are even not thinking right now so since as a result of the example that i have already told you right now the income level of the consumer since continuously decline in nature so they are not thinking for investment in the securities so as a result of that since all the consumers that who are living in the society are not thinking for investment in the securities market then the as a result of that the purchasing power of the consumers definitely decline as a result of that it will put a huge effect so far as companies are concerned yes or no so the purchasing power are always a very, very vital factor you may say so far as investment in the securities are being concerned higher will the income level higher will the purchasing power and vice versa it means lower will the purchasing power lower will be the income level so 
for oxygen power is such a huge factor which affects or which means a lot so far as investments in the securities are concerned. So dear students, these are the three main reasons. Apart from that, there are other you say, reasons due to which the business faces the systematic risk. Like you may say fire, suppose the business catches fire and huge amount of goods was destroyed due to fire, then also it is completely uncontrollable. No doubt we have to take precautionary steps or we have to make sure that we have taken necessary steps to reduce the risk. But if due to some reason, unfortunately the fire catches, then a huge amount of goods will be destroyed. Then as a result of that, the business may face loss. So this will come under the systematic risk. Then flood, other flood ho gaya. So since uh, flood is there, then also the business is also having a huge amount of loss. Then cyclone or you may say earthquake or other natural calamities or you may also say theft. So due to theft, fire, flood, cyclone, earthquake and other natural calamities, if the business is facing some kind of loss, so these kind of losses are completely, you may say, uncontrollable because these are external. The business cannot do anything. What can the business do? Yes, the business can simply face those kind of risks. Cannot do anything. Even 1% is not even in the control of the businessman. Or in, even not 1% is in the completely control of the investors. So the investors has to bound to face such kind of uh, systematic risks. So these are the main three types of risks apart from that that I have already told you just right now. Other types of risk is also there. So in the subsequent videos we will see the various concept of uh, unsystematic risk because I have already told you in today's class risks are of two types. One is systematic that we have already discussed in today's video. Number two is unsystematic risk which we will discuss in the subsequent classes. That's it. Thank you.